This video is brought to you by Spike. As I shoot this, it is MacBook Pro Eve, and I have two MacBook Pros coming, so I'm super excited to cover those in the coming weeks here, which is also why I wanted to squeeze out one more iPad video um, for the time being before the MacBook Pro content rush. And this is an important video because I do very much value my iPad Pro as a productivity and student-oriented device, and today I wanna to share with you five apps that I think will make your iPad OS experience even better. Uh, and as you can see here, I'm shooting on an iPhone with cinematic mode, that's probably why this video is going to be uploaded in 1080p um, and I'm shooting with a 13 Pro up there with the 3x telephoto so it might be a tiny bit shaky here and there I'm gonna add stabilization but um, yeah the 13 Pro uh, camera setup is really really great and I wanted to put it to the test I'm also using an iPhone 13 as a voice over um, you know little external audio recorder type device it's closer to my mouth so this is a completely iPhone shot video for your information so yeah, with that said, let's jump into the demo here. The first app that I wanna show off to you is called Spike, and it would be a mistake to just call this an email client. It works on top of a pre-existing email that you might have through your school or really any website, any client that you really use already, uh, but it brings so many amazing features that will make your email or just communication experience a whole lot better. In my case, I am logged into my school account here, as you can see. And the number one thing I want to bring up first is um, the way that emails look. Um, in a typical email client like Gmail, you kind of have like a list and sometimes like old messages are sort of like underneath messages, it's a mess. But with this, you have actual conversational boxes like you might have in iMessage, which allows you to see more clearly where a new message is and also to go back and understand what is really going on. So I really do enjoy that. This app also has great search functionality. They call it Super Search. If you tap the search icon here, you can look up a specific file files by keyword or contact, even if you don't remember the name of your file, and this can help you find files very quickly without wasting time here. And I won't even search something because a file that I want to look at is this problem set regrade determination uh, thing, which had to do with an assignment that my group and I turned in in my business law class and we had to get something regraded. So this is already here recently and I didn't have to dig through previous emails to find it. And also too, I will mention this, um, as you can see here, um, I have a bunch of emails from my just like teachers and professors and stuff. Um, this app will sort of sort your mail priority wise. So what's most important will show up, um, which is nice for staying organized because sometimes your inbox can get very, very cluttered with mail you don't necessarily wanna read. Another one of my favorite features with this app is sending integrated voice messages. You don't have to go to voice memos anymore. You don't have to like externally export it and then like send a different email outside of a dialogue you already have. You can actually record a voice memo right in app, which is super convenient. And I love this because A, I'm a talker. I prefer to talk to people over the phone. Um, but if I wanna convey something complicated um, and not have to worry about typing it out, especially when I'm on the go, you can just send something like this. And once you're done, you press the check mark uh, and you can actually play it back a little preview. Right in app, which is super convenient. And I love And that's it. as simple as it is. You can press pause, you can go back and then send that, boom. You know, So I can uh, receive that as well here and play that Voice back. Memo. Right there you go, there. that's as simple as that, and it's great if you want to once again convey something very complicated or if you want to convey the right emotion. Um, it's important to send audio messages, and it's very convenient here. Beyond audio messages too, you can send GIFs in chat, sort of like you could with some messaging apps. I can click the GIF button here, and we have some trending um, GIFs here, so I can send like um, this monkey one or you know Garfield saying Happy Monday. And that's all an app. I didn't have to go to Google Images. I didn't have to do any extra work. It was already there. And that again is really nice to make emails more personal. Another great feature of this app is integrated voice messaging and video call messaging. If you tap on a particular contact, even if they don't have spikes, so long as you do, you can call them or video chat them and they will receive a link to their email that they can click on and sort of engage that way. And real quick, here's a first person demo as to how meetings or video calls work within Spike. Uh, Emily, a rep over at Spike, sent me a meeting link, which I can tap right here and I can join. So here we are. And there we go. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Sorry you can't see my face, but I'm filming a first-person perspective here for the people. 
but it's sort of like Zoom in the fact that you don't have to actually have it downloaded or you don't have to have the program to actually engage with it, which is very nice. And just like with voice calls and video chats within Spike, you can also make collaborative notes even if you are the only one with Spike, so long as somebody gets a link in an email, they can collaborate with you in a different window. Again, even if they don't have the program installed or if they're not signed up. So I can create a note here by pressing the little um, pencil button here and creating a new note by pressing that button. And then we can open the note here and title it. So I can call this group notes, for example, and then type away. And you know, there's rich text here. You can have headers, you can bold and italicize and all that good stuff. And here's a demo of collaborative notes when you actually have somebody to collaborate with. I'm working on a to-do list and I shared this note with a person that could be a classmate and they're adding some suggestions to this list as well. So I can add something like, for example, study. That's the thing that I can type with one hand right now. But as you can see, somebody is updating this note live, just like you would with the Google Docs. So yeah, this can happen once again within the Spike app and without or outside of it. Um, if the other person doesn't have it, they can still interact with you again in a collaborative note. And last up, I wanna talk about read and received notifications within Spike here. So as you can see, I sent myself messages about five minutes ago and I have two little green check marks here. That means I received the message. But if you scroll up here, I sent myself a message on Tuesday and we have a little eyeball icon, which means I read it. So this works for the most part. And this is nice if you wanna know if somebody is ignoring you, maybe you're in school and someone's being passive aggressive. If you wanna know that they're in the know, um, this is definitely a nice feature to have. And also too, it just makes sure that everybody within like a group project, for example, got an email. You can make sure that, you know, everybody is caught up. Um, and if a message failed to send, you would know because you would not see the delivered notification. So this is a nice feature as well. And that about wraps up Spike. It is a fantastic cross-platform email client. And of course, much more than that. I have it on my Mac. I have it on my Android phones when I use them, my iPhone and also my iPad. So I'll leave a link in the video description if you are interested in checking it out. The second app that I want to demo is Notion, and this is the app that's keeping my life together right now, although I have to kind of fill it out, but this gives me the opportunity to kind of take you through my process. Um, so this is my weekly agenda here, and basically Notion just sort of allows you to keep track of all the tasks that you do in whatever way you really want. There's a bunch of different you know, layouts, and this is the one that I prefer. This is sort of a checklist type layout. It looks pretty bare bones right now, but I'm going to add a lot more to it because I have so much MacBook Pro content to cover. Um, so today was pretty chill. Um, I uh, met with my group so I can actually write this in like I should have earlier this morning. Um, I can say meet with um, TO group. My TO class is sort of like a technical operations and statistics, like supply chain type class that I have no idea what's going on in. Um, but I can do uh, meet TO people and I can check that off there. So if that was written earlier, um, yeah, I could have checked that off and you know I could have felt more accomplished about my day. Um, but for Tuesday, I have to you know get the MacBook Pros or sign for them because they're being shipped to my um, place. Um, then I can do um, get lunch here or pick up lunch because I will be out and about for that um, with regard to the MacBooks. And then um, I can also type, you know, um, post unboxing. That's probably what I'm going to do. And then maybe like watch TV, you know, downtime, make sure that I'm spending time with my boyfriend just having a second um, in my day. So that's going to be tomorrow. I'm going to add some more though. But as I go through my day, I check these off. I also have a crazy content schedule list and I might end up using this because I have a lot of videos planned in a very short amount of time. So this allows me to sort of differentiate my general sort of more broad tasks with more specific ones that have to do with, you know, shooting a roll or B roll or scripting or writing, etc. Um, but yeah, this app is an absolute godsend. It is free on the app store. I'll leave a link to this as well. It keeps me together. Honestly, I have it on my phone. I have it on my iPad and my Mac and it's all synced up through your email or whatever email you use it with. It is fantastic. I cannot believe I didn't use it sooner. Um, I had friends who used it before and kind of recommended it to me and it was like, I don't need it. But as I've become more busy with school and stuff and as I have meetings and videos and schoolwork to all sort of manage, having everything in one place and having notifications and just like having it on my phone, having sort of a multi cross-platform device, sort of like Spike or cross-platform program to keep me organized is very, very important. So again, I'll leave a link to this in the video description, totally recommend using it. It is honestly saving my life.
Next up, we have the tried and true notability. Is that even a saying? I think it is, but sometimes I feel like I'm making stuff up when I'm tired. But anyway, notability has been an app that I've been using for years since I had an iPad Air 2 before the Apple Pencil even existed. Um, I've been using this app to mark up PDFs, to take notes. It is really, really great. My sister actually uses it on an iPad 7th gen. She takes beautiful notes. So this is definitely one of the best note-taking apps besides the other one, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute here. It is definitely basic, but it it works so, so well. It's been around forever. And yeah, it's great for marking a PDF. So I'll actually pull one up here. Here's a perfect example of marking up a PDF. This is my business law textbook. I imported it here because I had it as a PDF. And what I do is I print pages out because I go to a really fun school where some of the classes um, don't allow you to have you know electronics on the inside, which is so, so sensical to me. Um, but nonetheless, I can, even if I was purely digital, annotate my book here um, like so, and it's really easy. I don't have to, you know, get a highlighter. I don't have to, you know, do it in an actual book. Um, and it keeps it all in one place. And again, the UI is very, very simple. You have your top bar up here with all of your controls, your colors. Um, you can adjust the thickness of the highlighter, which I'm going to do and actually erase this because this is way too fat. Um, there we go. That's a more acceptable size here. And yeah, um, that is um, what I do here for business law. I scroll through um, with notability. And also too, I sign documents as well. I can maybe pull something up here that isn't like, you know, too secretive. Well, actually, I'll just pretend that I have something to sign here. So let's just pretend I'm signing a contract or signing just something, you know, some sort of agreement. Um, if I have all the text up here, I can import it as a PDF and then sign and then, you know, send that on my way. I can go to the shared button here. I can send it through an email. I can share it through other apps. I can share the note like this and I can send it to context. I can send it through iMessage, mail, Gmail, Canvas, all these other apps. It's very, you know, you know, app, other app friendly. I mean, iPad OS has been for a minute, but this app is for sure. You can export stuff as PDFs and actual notability notes to send to other devices. And yeah, I mean, even though this, this app is sort of pricey um, upfront, it is definitely worth it. It is very refined. You cannot go wrong with this. You can also input text if you want as well and change the font here. I can change the uh, font to Kabur Gurnajati. Um, I totally butchered that. I can also make it bold and underline it and change the color. So you have control over text as well. You can also add pictures. So I can add a picture right here by pressing the plus button. Um, you can go to photo library and I can add, um, how about an iPhone picture right here? Boom. And let's just say I wanted to annotate it and let's just say I was gonna create a thumbnail or something and I wanted to just mark up a photo, um, which is better to do uh, in Notability than the Photos app. I will tell you that right now. Um, I can circle, I can uh, you just write on here, I can zoom up and you know just really interact very easily. I can just write like iPhone 13 Pro, maybe I can like outline the exterior, who even knows? Um, but yeah, this is a really great markup app. You know, it's a simple one too. It's very just, I wouldn't say bare bones, but very just to the point. And I very much enjoy it. I've been using it for years, so I recommend it. And I will leave a link to that in the video description as well. But if you're doing more in-depth note-taking and you want some like lined virtual paper and all that, I definitely recommend Good Notes. You cannot go wrong with this app. It's still a little bit pricey, like around I think like seven or eight dollars, maybe even ten dollars at this point on the App Store. But it's totally worth it. As you can see here, I was marking up PDFs last year in my accounting class. This is like the last time I took real notes um, because you know I've been taking paper ones this semester, which is so much fun. Um, but this is um, also a great app once again for sort of inline note as well as you can see here I was writing just yeah just in the lines here on virtual paper with a paper like screen protector by the way totally recommend getting those I'll leave a link to in the video description to that as well totally changes your note-taking experience and also drawing experience as well um, on any iPad for example or any any iPad in general you can get it for any iPad that exists even the iPad mini so again link in the description. Um, but yeah, this is such a great app for that. Um, when I take or start taking classes that, you know, don't have this sort of electronics ban, this is the app that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be creating a new notebook, which I can do right here. Um, new notebook. Um, I don't know why it's um, sideways. It shouldn't be, but you know what? We're going to, we're going to roll with it. Um, and yeah, you can just get, go to town here. I can write, you know, whatever the date is, 10, 26, uh, 21. And I can just, yeah, I can start writing, I can zoom in. So, hello, this is my first note. Very, very nice. You can zoom out, 
you have lined paper. I really enjoy that. I was somebody who used to take notes on paper and I'm currently taking notes on paper. So this is a very familiar experience and it's all consolidated into one app. And yeah, just like Notability, you can do markup with PDFs. You can also change um, the color of your stuff. Although I think Notabilities is a little, eh, no, they're about the same, I would say. You have a bunch of different colors. Um, you can also draw shapes, you know, uh, the sort of snaps into a perfect shape if you use this mode right here. Um, and you can also add pictures as well. So I can import a picture of my cat here if I wanted to. He's begging for macaroni and cheese in this picture. Um, very cute boy. And uh, I can also mark that up. I can outline him and such. And also, you know, the ball. So similar notability, but again, you have richer sort of paper or virtual paper. Um, and yeah, you can also have sort of virtual notebooks too. It's just more of like, a, I don't know, like skeuomorphic type app, not like skeuomorphic in terms of like iOS 6, but more like, I don't know, it, it has less of a digital feel while also giving you the best of digital note taking. So I really enjoy this as well. I have several notebooks. I use this, um, you know, when I can do digital notes right now, it's a little bit restricted, but yeah, this is the app that I will be using um, for, I think the time being and maybe years to do my digital note taking and such. Um, I, was, I also used to keep a planner in Good Notes as well before I switched to Notion, and this was helpful. I would handwrite stuff. So you have a lot of different temp templates and layouts and such with this app, so I'll leave a link as well. Very much worth the money that you pay for it. And finally, the last app that I want to demo is Keynote. And you may be thinking, Noah, that's a free app on my iPad, and it's like PowerPoint, kind of boring. Why are you covering it? Well, friends, um, I think it's way better than slides and PowerPoint. I think you can make really nice presentations on here if you want to stand out. Use this app if you have an iPad. Um, and I have a presentation that I made like five years ago that I still think looks amazing. Um, and I'm gonna brag about it because I can't believe I made this when I was a freshman in high school here. This is about the San Bernardino shooting incident and iCloud security. Um, I made the presentation, I didn't necessarily do all the content, um, but as you can see here, we have some really nice um, you know, animations happening here. We have a picture and then it goes you know, like this type, like I did this when I was like 15 years old or 16 years old. Let's just say, yeah, uh-huh. So this is a current event at that point when I made this. Um, so look at this, it's like spelling it out. Um, yep, uh, what else here? This is, yeah, this is all in Keynote. I used to use Keynote before I knew how to use Final Cut Pro to just have like cool visuals and stuff. So this app is really, really nice here. Um, and you know, uh, you know, great visuals, I know. But you know, this is a really nice presentation, I gotta say. And uh, yeah, I'm, look at iOS 9, iOS 9. This is when this, this, is when this presentation was created. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with this. And um, you know, again, if you're gonna make a presentation for business, for whatever you're doing, this is the app to use, honestly. I mean, you can make other apps look good, but this, you know, Apple is really, really good with, you know, visuals and stuff with their um, presentation app here. As you can see, I can scroll through the slides here. Um, I can edit the slides as well, um, you know, move text around. For example, I'm gonna undo that because I don't wanna touch this because I'm very happy with it, but it's easy to use. You can use it with the Magic Keyboard like you would with a MacBook. You can edit your presentation on a Mac if you have one, and you can control it on here as well in AirPlay. Um, so yeah, love Keynote. I cannot recommend it enough, even though it is an app that comes with your iPad. And yeah, that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful. Leave a like if you want to. Of course, you don't have to. Comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions. And subscribe if you want to see more content about iPad and, of course, MacBook Pro. Uh, yeah, check out my link to Spike in the video description once again. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.